Have you ever wondered how much fertilizer you could use before it begins to shut down your microbiology or begin to affect your terpene profile? Well, in this video, we're going to get into it. You're here with Mark Batwell at PerfectGardens.com. Okay, so we got a great question from James. What nutrient line would you recommend? And would you say Beastie Blooms, as an example, detracts from the terpene profile in a cultivar? Cultivar is just the name of the plant. A lot of people say and have been told to me that strain really doesn't exist. It's just that's just kind of slang but the proper way to name it is cultivar. So in a killer natural compost soil, just by giving it a little boost for two weeks because it is a salt-based fertilizer. All right, so this is a great question. First off, if you haven't watched our other video, salt versus fertilizer, I call it Fox Farm versus organic. It's going to talk about a couple more details that I might miss in this video. Although the sweet spot or the max you can hit is about 900 parts per million of phosphorus. Just to be very specific, right when you begin to get over 900 parts per million of phosphorus, it's going to begin to shut down your microbiology. So your microbiology is more attracted to rock-based fertilizers than salt-based fertilizers. There are two brands that I'm going to throw out right now, but there's many brands out there that do the same thing. The most important thing to really do is look in the back of these bottles and see where the products are derived from. Okay, so one of the products lines I like to use is Bounty B3 line and also raw. Reason why those two lines I like is because they use rock-based fertilizers and because I'm growing with natural microbiology and because I am using my minerals, I always talk about drops of balance, and because I understand the complexity of how minerals are released through pH, it's very interesting how everything kind of works together. So your pH kind of says what it's going to specifically process. And you know this because all the time it that ideal range is 5.8. Although to make the minerals water soluble at nighttime, your roots produce carbon dioxide, which makes your root rhizosphere alkaline. At that point, you, the acids that have been breaking down the rocks during the day get absorbed into the water because when you're in an alkaline environment, the alkaline environment, the sodium bicarb environment specifically, will attract the acid molecules into the sodium bicarb environment, finding homeostasis. And from that point forward, the acids absorbed in the water get absorbed into the root system and into the plant. So will plants use salt-based fertilizer? Of course they will. And a salt-based fertilizer is kind of like an IV or it's kind of like going up the rectum, right? You're bypassing the kidneys and you're bypassing your natural filtration system. Where it begins to be counterproductive is when, again, you're hitting about eight to 900 parts per million of phosphorus specifically. That one specifically really begins to affect your microbiology. So will you using beastie blooms affect the terpene profile if you use it for a couple of weeks? No, absolutely not. Where it's going going to affect you is if you're using this line, the Fox Farm line, or I hate to use Fox Farm as the name, but it is all synthetic. You're using the synthetic fertilizer throughout your entire grow. And basically from the get-go, you measure it out, your parts per million are above a thousand normally. So every week when you're feeding your plants or you're feeding them every other feeding, those salts will accumulate over time in the growing media. And because the microbiology is more attracted to the rocks because of that whole acid exchange from CO2 at night and oxygen during the day and the breaking down and the oxidation of rocks specifically and the microbiology being attracted to rocks more than they are to salts because salts bypass the microbiology. 
So the microbiology really doesn't help the salts a lot. So that sweet spot, once again, is about 800 parts per million. It will help you using a salt-based fertilizer as long as you just don't use too much. And just kind of be aware of what you're giving it because some of the fertilizers will begin to affect your terpene profile. I know you, I kind of, I'm being kind of a little bit counterproductive. I'm saying above 900 parts per million will affect your terpene profile. Anyone out there that have ever used an old school product called Phospho Load or the Hulk, those types of products, I don't know if they even still exist, they get these big golf ball sized flowers, but the oil production on the plant is horrible, you know, and it doesn't have great smell and you got a lot of weight, but, and normally a lot of people using those products will end up running into botrytis because of excess humidity issues within the inside of the flowers. So if anyone is planning to use a combination of microbiology and fertilizer, what I would probably recommend doing is keeping your system somewhat light. Use the microbiology throughout the the majority of your grow. If you are going to use some fertilizer, maybe use fertilizer every other week because you're not going to need a lot of it. And then just like this gentleman is talking about, if you're going to use Beastie Blooms for a couple weeks, because that's really the only time you use it for two weeks during the whole grow, go ahead because these two feeds especially if you haven't been filling up your growing media with salts the entire time, your microbiology is going to be working and processing the rocks naturally, especially if you're using a rock-based fertilizer like Botanic Bounty 3 or Raw as a base nutrient. And then if all you have is BC blooms, yeah, 100%, it's going to definitely increase your yield it'll probably increase your overall terpene and oil production because you're not hitting that 900 parts per million of phosphorus on a daily basis throughout the entire grow. And also, if you are using B3 or raw, they have additives, you know, so I would recommend just checking out their additives and sticking to one nutrient line and going by their feed schedule. In the next couple videos, I'll be producing feed schedules around raw, and I recommend to look forward to our new website coming out because we will be updating a number of things. The whole website's going to get a new facelift, and the raw product is going to be a product line that I'm going to be pushing a little bit more often and getting people used to using it so that they have an alternative to Fox Farm because the main reason is sunlight, one of the main distributors for Fox Farm was bought out by Bayer, if I remember straight. I don't believe it was Scott's. And for a couple years, they continue to keep carrying these other product lines but recently they made the decision to start carrying and pushing all of their own products so they've stopped carrying and distributing fox farm so i know fox farm doesn't have many distributors because sunlight kind of tied all these companies up in certain distribution rights so fox farm line might be difficult to find in hydro stores for the next few months until they work alternative distribution options. So look forward to the raw video. Also, please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you so much, and have a beautiful grow, everyone.